in the NBA, we finally know what the Warriors offered for Larry Markkinen. Let's break it down. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and pivot on over to a team that has 0% chance of getting Cooper. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the Utah Jazz, shall we? <laughs> Damn it, Darren. Just crush everybody's dream right at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Before we get into the content, folks, let's go ahead and quickly mention that we do have our cha- our jazz channel that is dedicated specifically to Utah Jazz content. It's called Utah Jazz DNA. This is where, if you're following us for Utah Jazz content, all of our Utah Jazz content will be posted on this channel. First, also, we'll still be on our main channel, DNA Sports Recap. Once Utah Jazz DNA hits 1,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away a jersey. It'll be one of the sweet new black ones. The black ones. Yeah, that's right. We'll be giving one of those away, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that giveaway, and as always, smash that like button. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and talk about our a Utah Jazz, shall we? When it comes to the recent talk, we actually now, there's been a lot of talks around Larry Markman, right? Oh, tons, dude. Lots tons, of tons, tons, yeah. Lots of talk about it. There's talks with uh, the Sacramento Kings. They had a trade on them on the block for them. They deadlined it, and the Jazz didn't take it, so they moved on and signed DeMar DeRozan. And then, um, you know, there's been a, just a bunch of different talk, trade talks when it comes with him uh, in mind, you know, whether it be you know, San I mean, everyone, everyone's semi interested in Laurie. Yeah, the Lakers. You yeah, know, there's definitely been a lot of talk about it. But the one that's basically making the most noise, and the one I think is the biggest threat, is the Golden State Warriors. Yep. Now, this has come from the Athletic Sam Sharamia. He reports the Warriors have discussed their offer around uh, Moses Moody, multiple first round picks, multiple pick swaps, multiple second round picks, but that was not enough to make the deal. And the Warriors probably know that. And the Jazz are reportedly asking for all that stuff, plus Jonathan Kaminga and uh, Braden Pudsminski. That obviously is too much, and the Jazz probably know that too. Uh, from uh, This is from uh, Sam Quinn at CBS Sports. So when you look at that here, so basically what the Warriors offered is Moody, t- multiple first rounds, multiple p- first round swap picks, multiple uh, swaps, and multiple second rounds. Utah wants them to add, take that and also add uh, Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon Putzmiski as well. Tell me what you think about that. Where do you think that do you think that's too much for the Jazz to ask? Do you think that's going to fall somewhere in the middle? What are your thoughts on that? No, I think I think this is a typical Danny Ainge man. I mean, the the fact is is the Jazz are not just going to give Laurie Markkinen away. They don't need to move him. Uh, they do still believe they can extend him. They do believe he still wants to be in Utah. The Jazz are going to put themselves in a position to win in the future with some young players like Jonathan Kuminga mm-hmm. and Pozemski. These are these are players that help them win in the future. The fact is the Warriors want to win now, right? They understand that Steph Curry has a window. The dude is 36 years old. And if the Warriors want to win now, that is not the Jazz's problem. That's the least of the Jazz concern is the, Jazz, is the Warriors winning now because Realistically, what the Jazz don't want to do is get players that are going to allow the Warriors to win in the future that devalues every single one of those picks. Right. And players like Kuminga and Pozemski are the players of the future for the Warriors. The Jazz want to know that once this window closes, it's closed with the Steph Curry, yeah. right? It's closed and those picks are valuable. Yeah, we've already learned. Hopefully, they've already learned their lesson with the Donovan exactly. Mitchell Rudy Gobert trade. Because yep. believe it or not, guess what? The way it sits right now uh, with we made both those teams way better. Yeah, we made both those teams way better. Yeah. And Donovan re-signed. Rudy's going to stay. Like the, those picks aren't valuable at all. The Timberwolves. We have a pick for them coming up next year in the in the draft. They're one of the top three teams in the NBA, so that pick's going to be around 29, 28. And then we also have Cleveland, and with Donovan Mitchell re-signing there, that pick's going to be right around. And they're the tenth best team in the league right now, according yeah, so to 20. Early picks. So that pick's going to be around your twenty to twenty-five. Yep. And so the Jazz will also have their first-round pick if it's uh, bad enough that they're not going to default and lose their pick to the Timberwolves. So if they're too good, they're going to lose their pick to the Wolves. And but if they're bad enough, they get to keep it. So here's what we're going to have: we're going to have another year. Where we get a low, a late lottery pick, and then two other picks later in the draft. So we're going to have a rinse and repeat three times in a row for three straight years. That's exactly why they are not saying that this offer is good enough. Yeah, I agree. And um, what I think is probably going to more likely happen is they're going to back off some of the trade pieces, but still keep at least uh, Brandon Putzminski in that in that trade. I, I agree. I think that's probably the player they're trying to go for. He brings a lot of stuff that the Jazz could really use around assembling any team, right? He's, he's just a good, solid young player. 
Um, and I think that if Danny Ainge is pretty, pretty standardly asking way more and then he'll back off, right? Like he, he, he has his set price and he knows what he's going to get for, um, for Laurie. And he's going to ask a little bit more than he wants. And then as they back off, he's like, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. See, that's the, and that's kind of the point though. This basically kind of goes to, uh, something that I heard on, uh, David Locke's podcast where he talked about, um, how the jazz typically just don't have a way to afford to go big game hunting. If you look at the Mikel Bridges trade, that kind of set the market. Absolutely. That was five first round picks for Mikel Bridges, which is insane because Mikel Bridges is not a five first round pick picks player. Yeah. So basically what the jazz need is they need a top 20 player in the NBA. Yeah. Right. Larry marketing. If they keep Larry marketing, he's not a top 20 player. Right, he's a top thirty, not a top twenty. Uh, but if you keep Larry Marketing, you still need a top twenty player. And Miguel Bridges is number who's ranked fiftieth in the NBA, and it took five first round picks to trade for him. And do the Jazz really want to, you know, flush all their capital that they've got, or you know, maybe a fortieth ranked player in the NBA? Like, so the big game hunting thing's not going to work out. And we know based off of the trades that we got from from the last time we traded multiple All Stars multi multi repeat all-stars is that those picks aren't going to be valuable if the team's still good so just to your point exactly i have it right here in my notes we need to make sure that post steph curry that those picks are good and that's why he wants those players moses moody jonathan kaminga and brendan pavinsky those are the reasons why he wants them yep absolutely yeah. We'll see what happens, folks. Uh, I just recently heard that there's a lot more rumors surrounding the Spurs. But they already got Chris Paul. Can you imagine them adding Larry Marketing, Chris Paul, Victor Wembanyama? That is really tough to defend, especially because Chris Paul is a mid-game genius. Obviously, he's the point guard for a reason because he can pass. He's going to find Lori and all. Lori needed somebody to pull some gravity off of him, right? You mm -hmm. didn't have anybody that was consistent enough of a scorer. And, and I mean, on the tail end of last season, all we saw was everybody doubling Laurie. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the only offensive threat the Jazz really had. I mean, you could bring Jordan Clarkson into the game, and if he's hot, yeah, you might have to actually guard him. But if not, he could go zero for 76 in one game, and nobody even bats an eye at it because that's just who Jordan Clarkson is. And I yeah. love him, but that, that's just who he is, right? He's a very streaky player. He always has been. He's a scoring weapon. That's that's what Jordan Clarkson's job is. Mm -hmm. But he's a streaky scoring weapon and someone that has a consistent game like Chris Paul that can, if you leave him open in the mid in the mid range, it's automatic. That's just who Chris Paul is. Mm -hmm. And if you send a defender at him and there's not somebody guarding Laurie or six feet from Laurie, Laurie's going to knock down those shots. Yeah. And, and now you add another three point shooter slash whatever you want to call in Banyama. <laughs> yeah. That's just a really tough team. So that, that is a, that is a great pickup you know, for the Spurs, because that does make it, that does make him absolute weapon. Yeah. I think it's insane when it comes to that. I, again, when I, I keep beating this drum and I've been saying it for ever since we started this show is that the Utah jazz are just not doing their rebuild correctly. They have one foot in one foot out. It's either got to be all in all out. You either try and compete and rebuild on the fly or you, you ship every bit of talent and you just deal with playing rookies and just being in the dumps of the league. We are two years into this rebuild. So over 20 months into this rebuild and we're exactly where we started, where we're going to repeat the exact same thing we've done for the last two years with yep. Laurie on this team. You are a 38, 35 to 38 win team with Laurie on this team with Laurie only, especially with, with Laurie in the roster we have that that's it. That's the best you're going to get. Yeah. So that's what you're going to run into. So you're going to get another late lottery pick. And you're going to be right back where you started before. Yep. You know, so I don't know. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You know, and again, whether we trade Laurie or not, you know, that's going to be, this is going to be the move that's going to basically tell the Jazz fans, you know, where this team's really going. Because nobody wants to move Laurie. We all want to keep him. We love having him here in Utah. Yep. But, it, but when it comes to reality, big game hunting's not working. We need to come up with a different solution. The only way to do that is build in the draft. Yep. Totally uh, agree. Yeah. Well, anyway, more to come on that. We'll talk about that. I do think that this, uh, this particular trade package has nothing to do with what they're going to do before. I don't think this trade goes down until August, August 6th. He can only be traded. If he signs an extension, he can only be traded on August 6th. That's it. Otherwise, he can't be traded for six months. Until the trade deadline. Yep. I think this is going to be a trade that goes down on August 6th, right after he signs his extension. Because that haul that Denny H is looking for is looking for after they know they have him for three years. Yep. So I think that's when you can see that something like this happening is at that time. But yeah, definitely more to come. Mm -hmm.